Monday, it's Suzanne, and today I have a quick and easy project to share with you today. Sometimes when I am in a creative slump, I love going into Michaels, and I don't have any intention of buying anything. I just like to go in, spend 30 minutes to an hour just browsing throughout the entire store, and that really helps to give me some inspiration. So, for today's project, it was simply a witch's hat and some gumballs. So, let me go ahead and share with you that project. So here is what I created, and it is just a witch's hat candy mason jar. I actually made something similar to this um, last season, so I'll probably show that to you in another video. But I just love the way this turned out. I love altering mason jars. They're actually one of my signature items that I do have in my inventory for my holiday boutiques. So I absolutely Love the way this turned out, a few details, and you have a great gift item to give that coworker or even a neighbor. So let me share with you exactly what you'll need to create this project. I'm gonna share with you the items that you'll need if you would like to recreate the Witch's Hat Mason Jar. You will need the Witch's Hat Picks for the top of the Mason Jar, and I picked these up from Michaels. You'll need some candy to fill your jar, or you could fill it with, with a gift card, with cookies, whatever you like. You're gonna need some punches. So here I am using a spider punch and the circle punch. I never know what to call it, but it has that really fun um, edging on it. It's like a just a cute party, simple circle element that I love using. And then I have a bat punch that I'm using, and these again are all from Martha Stewart. They're old, I've had them forever. And you will need some twine. You're gonna need some E6000, and I just picked this up from Michaels. Some black embossing powder. The Versamark pad, as well as your Halloween sentiment. You will need a spiderweb die, and I can't seem to find mine because I have like four different projects going on right now so that's being used so it's probably with the other project that I'm working with so anyway you'll need some just some white glitter cardstock is what I cut the spider web out of you will need a mason jar and I've already spray painted the lid and that's not necessary but I just like the finished look that it does give my project you will need some black distress ink and let's see and just for like cardstock, I didn't use many colors, so I, you'll just need like some green, some orange cardstock, and then some vellum paper. You'll need some ribbon, and I picked this up from Michaels. I just love it, so I thought it was perfect for the jar. And then you will need a couple of dies if you just want to add some more detail. And I use just the star die from this collection, and it is by... Tim Holtz and it's called witchcraft so I use that and then for the center of my mason jar I use the doily from Lori Whitlock and this is called hello doily so those are the two dies that we'll need in conjunction with the spider web okay let's go ahead and get started and I'll just share some basic steps in how to recreate this mason jar that's going to be perfect for a co-worker a neighbor or even for one of your kids all right, so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to begin. I believe I failed to mention a couple of items that you will need. You will need a couple of tags, and these here are cut from a Tim Holtz tag set die, and I will try to remember to link that in the description box. It's just my go-to tag dies. I love them, I use them on everything, and so this here is also from it as well. And then here I did use um, the Witchcraft um, new die. It came with the little star, so I did use that, and I just die cut on my little tag. And then you will need a circle as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, I mentioned you do not have to um, spray paint your or paint your lids, but I like to because I just like the finished look that it gives my project. So that's going to be the first thing that you'll do. And then I just use a glue dot to hold in place 
my doily, okay? Because that's gonna go in the center and it'll be adhered better once we um, run our um, ribbon around it. So we're gonna do that. Okay, next you're gonna go ahead and adhere your ribbon around and this measures um, 11 and a half in length. And so I just wrap it around and then I just kind of make sure it's in the center and I apply a little bit of hot glue to this. And then if you did have some fabric glue, that would work as well, but I just find that this works easiest for me. And then I just bring it around just like that, making it as even as and as tight as possible. Okay, just like that. And let's go ahead and set that aside. Now, to disassemble this pick, it really, you just twist it off and it just comes right off the little pick. Easy as that. So you're still saving it and it's still intact. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lid. And let's see, I need some E3000, so let me go ahead and grab that. Or E6000, excuse me, E6000 is what I used. So what I do is I just go ahead and put it all along the top of the lid. And I just make sure I get a lot on there. And then I just turn this upside down and just ensure that this is center. It's in the center there and I just kind of hold it for a little bit. I have glue on my fingers. I'm in the middle of finishing my Halloween, Halloween banner so I am just full of glue and glitter, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave, let this dry for a little bit because it will need some time to adhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and then we'll just finish the rest of the jar. All right, next we're going to adhere our spider web and our rosette. I've already assembled that already. And I just like to use, again, just a little bit of hot glue. Oh, I need another glue stick. That might help Suzanne. <laughs> so just a little bit in the center. And I'll adhere the rosette next. Just like that. And then let me grab this and my vellum. And just a tip, because I do love embossing these little circles, but I usually just emboss like, you know, a whole sheet of paper, and then this way it is ready to go when I just need a little piece, just like that. So that'll go there. And you could use a glue, um, a glue dot for this, but I'm just gonna use the hot glue gun because it's here. So that's gonna go there. I'm just kind of clean that up. Let me just go ahead and let that sit and then I'll clean it up of all the little glue webs that we have going on here. I should have probably just used a glue dot for that. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and punch out my cute little bat from some green cardstock. And I'm gonna go ahead and distress them first with just some black ink and then adhere them to the center of the jar. Okay. Just to give them a little bit of color, just so he kind of pops up a little bit. Then I'm just gonna use my glue and adhere him to the center of that circle. Just like that. And I'm gonna give him a chance to dry as well. Now we can begin to assemble our tag. I love making these jars. They're just so fun to make and they're so easy. Super easy and they just make a really great presentation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere that to the center. Just like that. And let's see, I'm gonna grab this cardstock circle and then I'm going to need a black spider. 
And I just found this scrap of embossed cardstock I already had in my stash, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I normally do not keep my scraps, so hopefully some of you are not cringing, but I just don't have the room to keep everything, but I have started to keep my basics like blacks, white, vellum, all of my scraps in you know in those colors. But otherwise, I just tend to, you know, let my daughter use some of it, or I just have to toss it just because I just don't have the room. So I'm going to go ahead and distress, give this little circle some ink around the edges. Okay, that looks good. And then I need to grab some pop dots. So I can pop that off the tag. Okay, just like that. And I think I'm gonna pop him off as well. So I need my smaller pop dots. Luckily, everything's like close behind because I have banner behind me and I'm just trying to wrap that up tonight. I have one more panel and I'm kind of struggling with that last one. So hopefully it'll all come together soon. Okay, just like that. And then we have this is gonna sit right on top like that. And oh, I am gonna add some rhinestones just because, so that there, and let's add a tiny one to the center of the bat. He's still moving, so he needs some time to dry. Okay, just like that. And then I think I added, let's see, yeah, I added another one over here. So let's just grab this one and add one to the Happy Halloween. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and just tie it around our jar. I have more twine than I need, but I always like to have more than enough just because I have a hard time tying sometimes. So let's go ahead and just kind of get it off to the side. And I just like to wrap it around the lid a, a few times and then I'll just tie it into a bow here to finish it off. Just like that. And then just kind of pull that in a little bit. And then I'll just cut my end. And this side too. Okay, and there you have it. Really easy. And then I'll just fill it in with some candy. And in this case, I'm just going to add some Hershey Kisses that I have. Okay, and now we can just add the topper to our mason jar. And this is dried. Actually want to make have it on the side of the jar so I'm gonna start back here as I start to twist Okay, there we go just like that I kind of want it off to the side and then these ribbons were a little too long for me on the original pick so I just cut the ends just a little bit so they weren't too long okay here's a look at the finished project super easy to make and wouldn't this make just a wonderful gift 
I just love it. I love this time of year, and this is just a simple and easy way to decorate a mason jar, and you can fill it with just about anything. It'll be really cute for if somebody had a birthday in, um, in ha on Halloween. You could, you know, insert a gift card, some little cookies, pretty much anything. So I had fun making these. I hope that you've enjoyed this really simple and easy project. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you have a wonderful Monday, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.